Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rock with Chuck Shelby Risk Management Commodities. Uh, livestock futures seeing losses on the day on Monday with the grain trade coming back in the row. Crops kind of a mixed close in the wheat market. And Chuck, let's talk about uh, the livestock first. We don't normally do that, but really a lot of risk off selling tied to what was going on with the meltdown in U.S. and global equities, right? Yeah, it certainly was uh, a pretty, pretty dramatic and uh, ugly day over in the, in the livestock, particularly the cattle market. But again, it's just money flow. There was no fundamental justification for what was going on other than the losses in equities and the stock market uh, caused the funds to rein in some profits from uh, particularly in the, the livestock market. And, and uh, money flow real today, uh, our hope for you know the rest of the week would be that the stock market settles down and we can find some stability over in the cattle market and uh, find a bottom here. And then we do have upcoming demand in cattle for the upcoming Labor Day weekend. So we should have good demand in the near term the next couple of weeks. Yeah, hopefully the stock market can stabilize, but there certainly was a lot of talk about recession on Monday, even last Friday. And then also maybe that the Fed might have to make some emergency interest rate cut moves. Do you think that's even a possibility at this point? It doesn't seem like a very good idea. I think that would add more concern to the market if they would make some kind of emergency statement because uh, that would give more credence to the negativity going on. So I, I hope they don't do that. I, I don't think that's in the cards. But, uh, you know, when you look at the stock market, when you have a $40,000 stock market and it's down a thousand points percentage of value, it's not as bad as it might seem. It's still bad. But but again, percentage of value, it's it's not uh, like it's an eight thousand dollar stock market and you lost a thousand points. Of course, the fear here is that we're going to see maybe some, at least in the protein sector, some slowdown in demand. Do you think that is a possibility? Are you concerned about that? Yeah, I, I've kind of been concerned. You know, throughout the summer, I thought we did have good demand. Uh, consumers were, you know, enjoying the summer, and it's always a good market for our meats in the summer. And you know, we got one more holiday to get through, but as we move into fall, uh, you know, inflation has continued to uh, build upon itself. And, you know, when you talk about recessions, you talk about, uh, you know, the end of the grilling season. There's two things that worry me about demand going into fall and early winter. You bet. Do you think we did any technical damage to any of the livestock markets, in particular the feeder cattle market, which has seen a real steep slide? Well, if you're a technician, it certainly wasn't a good day. It didn't really look very good, but I think you have to go back and, you know, look at the extreme reason that caused this uh, slide here. So um, in the reality, you know, the feeder cattle market is still a strong market. Uh, the producers out there got extremely cheap grain prices. So uh, I think the reality of the cash market will come back around eventually once we get through the next uh, week or so of this uh, slide caused by equity markets. Yeah, let's hope cooler heads can prevail. Conversely, we saw the grain trade start off lower with risk aversion there to start off Monday, but then the row crop sector kind of came back. Was that about money flow as well? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we would started today. We were down pretty hard, checking out some lows from last week in corn and beans. And then the funds uh, decided after lunch to start coming in and buying in force. Um, you know, it's good to see it come back around. Uh, the question you have to ask yourself going forward, though, is how much more can we get out of this? And that probably relates back to what the stock market's going to do. Definitely. But I guess my broader question for you is with the funds as short as they are, if they are unwinding some of their positions, if the stock market keeps going down, is it possible that they could blow out of a good portion of this short position that they have here in the grains? Yeah, I, th I think that's a reasonable expectation. Um, you know, they want to bank their profits. They're extremely short in corn and beans. Uh, you know, on the other side of the coin is as we go forward, we still have some old crop bushels that need to be, uh, you know, metered out here and sold in the next uh, couple weeks here. Uh, and also up, upcoming harvest. So if you're a producer and we do see a significant short covering, I think it's an opportunity, especially when you look at the world conflicts going on and, and the uncertainty. So if for producers, uh, let's hope it can keep going and, and get a, a more sizable amount of the funds to cover their positions. Yeah, going to be a tug of war, though, isn't it, Chuck? Like you say, as you go up, then you're going to get farmers selling. So it's going to be a tough lift. 
Yeah, and, and it, you know, it's been a difficult year for producers here, uh, especially when the funds uh, piled on as, as aggressively as they did. Now, the other component is a week from today, we're, we're going to see uh, another USDA report. Uh, you know, can that change things to the positive or negative? Uh, you know, what's the yield going to be? What are they going to do with acres? So it's just one of those markets where, as a producer, when you get an opportunity, you're going to have to grab hold of it. You know, it's going to be difficult to create a bull market again under the sick situation around the world and, and the amount of crop we have here. So, uh, again, opportunities may be here. Uh, but uh, have we turned a corner and, and turned this into a, a, you know, a bull market simply because the funds want to get out? Uh, I don't think that's the case right now. No, we would also have to have some demand that would be uncovered to help with this. And are we starting to see any evidence of that, do you think? Uh, today's uh, corn export inspections were, were really pretty darn good for this time of the year. And you know, another component of today's market was the dollar being off quite a bit. If right. we can really continue the dollars to slide, that's going to really help uh, our export business. Speaking of exports, let's talk a little bit about something that kind of got lost in all of the discussion today because we're so focused on the stock market. The Middle East tensions are starting to accelerate. So there's some geopolitical factor kind of brewing here too, isn't there? Yeah, an escalation of, of the Middle East conflict is certainly not what we want to see happen. You don't know how that's going to expand and what the outcome would be. You couple that with the war that continues in Ukraine. I mean, when the world's, uh, you know, concentrating on uh, two wars of uh, destruction and, and the loss of life, it's not the component you need to see good demand and good growth going forward. So uh, multiple things here uh, that are concerning, you know, for the demand side of the equation. So we talked about technicals on the livestock. So let's talk about what you're kind of watching over in the grains as well. I mean, December corn back over $4 at least. You still got beans over 10. But what are you watching here maybe to get the funds to buy just a little bit more here from a technical standpoint anyways? Well, ultimately, um, you know, taking out last week's highs, running D's corn, maybe, you know, into the 430, 440 range, ultimately maybe 450 is the best, best case you could see in the near term. Uh, November beans possibly getting back 1075, maybe towards $11. Those are the best, best cases. But again, as far as what producers might be looking for, this could be fast and furious. I mean, you could run up to some really levels that you would like to sell at but uh, at the end of the day it could be gone so if you're a producer you might want to put orders in or or be prepared because these markets are very quick moving and it could be on your favor for the early part of the day and by the end of the day it could be gone and all gone so that quickly so we need to be pretty vigilant as producers if we got some crop to sell here another opportunity before harvest comes yeah, no, that's really some good advice here when you get in these volatile markets. Conversely, on livestock, do you have any advice there for the volatility and getting through that? I, I think we can look for the market to come back around. But uh, as far as a uh, cattle producer, if you're raising fats out there, uh, if we get a rally back, I, again, I'm concerned about the fall and, and winter demand base and maybe next spring depends how things go. So. If we get rallies back, uh, take advantage of them. Try to, you know, get a floor underneath you and, and uh, take advantage of a situation that uh, should be, you know, very volatile even into next year. Yeah, it's been tough to hedge. That's for sure. All right. Thanks so much, Chuck. Chuck Shelby, Risk Management Commodities. That is Markets Now.